Six things that I learned from the Japanese Food Expo 2021. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it's a live stream, and if you're on the live stream, I'm looking forward to chatting with y'all, talking about Japanese food today, and with all live streams. Sometimes there's technical difficulties, so if you were here in the live stream, thanks for sticking with that black screen for just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get right into number one. The first thing I learned at the Japanese Food Expo 2021 is that ramen is a breakfast food in Japan. That's right, ramen, the noodle soup that many of us love in the city of Kitakata in Fukushima Prefecture. Uh, it is one of the three most popular cities for ramen in Japan, and they eat ramen for breakfast there. How did I find that out at the Japanese Food Expo 2021? Well, the Food Expo this year was virtual. It's one of my favorite annual events. It's typically held in person in Los Angeles. This year, they did it as a live stream, and so they showed clips from around the world, and they showed a clip from this ramen shop in Kitakata, and I want to show it to you and take a look at the line and take a look at what time all these people are lined up. There's about 30 seconds, and then we'll be right back. So that line, if you saw it, was there at 7.35 in the morning. And indeed, they do eat ramen for breakfast in Kitakata. Now, OC Girl and I, we were pretty lucky to go to uh, Kitakata actually just last year before the pandemic. It's something, I'm going to show you that clip in just a moment. We were at the Kitakata Ramen Festival sampling the ramen. And this ramen... Ramen Fest, Food Fest, Japanese Food Fest this year because it was virtual and you couldn't sample the foods there, which you usually can do. They sent out snack boxes to 50 lucky winners. And so at, during this video, I'm going to unwrap this snack box. It was wrapped a little bit nicer. I opened it to peek at what was in there because there's a couple things that we're going to make and eat during here. It comes in this uh, furoshiki cloth, which you can wrap uh, wine bottles on. And as we open this up, what, what are these things? We'll talk about these in a moment. But right here in this box is actually a package of instant noodles. This is instant noodle made in Japan. This is ramen uh, kitakata style ramen and OC girl is gonna help us make this so I can eat it on camera and talk about it it takes about five minutes um, I'm gonna open the package just so you can see what's in here and then I'll give it to her so in here there are three packages of noodles these noodles they age for about two days is what they said they dry for two days at the ramen festival and then there are some sauce packets uh, that make the soup base so oc girl if you would be so kind i am going to give you a noodle and a sauce packet that she's going to grab so you can see there's a person there look at that right and i'm not just handing it to the ether and she's going to be back in five minutes with that ramen and i don't need this in the snack box anymore and then we're going to come back to this snack box. All right. So uh, now the ramen shop that you saw in that video, actually, they have locations in the U.S. If you want to try some Kitakata style ramen in particular, you can get it in Orange County here. There's a restaurant called Kitakata Ramen Banai. They've got locations in Costa Mesa and Irvine. Uh, so you can try that out if you're visiting Southern California. But I want to show you the ramen in and of itself, how it's served in the city of Kitakata. This was taken just about a year ago. When you come to Fukushima Prefecture, you need to have Kitakata ramen. It's a different style ramen than is popular in the rest of Japan. And today we are at the Kitakata Ramen Festival and I'm here with Wakana-san. She is the organizer of this festival. And we have six different kinds of ramen in front of us. We have two from Kitakata and we have two from other regions in Japan. And so I was gonna ask, What's the difference between Kitakata ramen and other ramens? Because I think many people, particularly viewers from the U.S. or other places, might have just had ramen, but don't realize that there's different specialties. So, can you tell us what the difference is? 
札幌ラーメンは味噌ベースになります博多は豚骨がベースになります北方はお醤油がベースになります Well, and I understand that Kitakata as a city has like the most ramen shops per capita. Like it's a small town, but lots of ramen shops and they open for breakfast. Yeah. Are you from Kitakata? Do you live here? And do you eat ramen in the morning? Yes. Yes. All right. How many times do you eat ramen a week? Seven times a week. Every day. Yeah. This. This is a ramen city, so I'm really looking forward to trying these different kinds of ramen and uh, seeing which one's the best. So, looking at the comments in the live stream, uh, BF Delano says, I'm already hungry because I haven't eaten all day. Other people are saying they're hungry to lean into the English way. says, yummy for my tummy, Chris. Yummy indeed. And Soul says the OC girl is going to take more than five minutes because she has to boil that water. We had planned this, and so there's already water in our tea kettle, nice and hot. Uh, and... The uh, JFCA USA that actually puts on this food fest. Thanks for joining the live stream today. They love Kitakata ramen as well. So thanks for being here uh, in the chat. Um, Jesus says, I've eaten more than my share of ramen for breakfast. That's good, Jesus. Uh, yeah, and the only thing about, you know, the Kitakata ramen banai here in Orange County that I think makes them slightly less authentic, it's not the food. The ramen tastes, I think, just as good here as it does in Kitakata. They're not open for breakfast here, though. You can only get them for lunch. Uh, and Larry says, Chris, did you know that Japanese people like to eat raw egg with rice? You know what? In fact, I did know that. Uh, and because well, I've been to Japan, a lot of things, but not everybody knew that. We're going to talk more about egg with rice a little bit later as well. Uh, also, kind of like a slightly, maybe not raw, super popular, also the onsen eggs that they boil in the... Um, hot spring water and put on rice as well is super popular. All right. Uh, now, a question that people always ask during these videos is, Chris, what are you drinking? And so let's go on to the next thing. We're going to talk about item number two is we're going to talk about tea. I learned a lot about tea in the Japanese Food Expo 2021 uh, because they had a whole booth or virtual booth focused on tea. And by the way, in this little brochure uh, that came with the snack box, then they've got a whole bunch of things that talk about it. Actually, like, this is a great, uh, it was kind of neat to see the Japanese Food Expo do this because I've gotten other snack boxes from Japan and I always earn a lot from these brochures. So the tea we're going to be talking about is from Shizuoka, Japan, uh, region near Mount Fuji. In the box, there are two types of tea. There's matcha tea and gyokuro tea, which got me thinking about all the different types of tea. And they had a session where they talked about tea and they talked about the different types of tea. And so I want to show you some of the different types of tea and talk through what different types of Japanese tea there are, because actually it's always something I've been really confused about. Sencha, matcha, gyokuro, hojicha, what are all these different things? And so that's what I'm going to share with you now. But the first thing I want to show you is a uh, little video that they showed about all the different types of tea. And then I'm going to show you a video about the tea production process and then walk through how it's made as we do that. So let's go ahead and go into the different types of tea. This is just like 10 seconds, so you can see them all. So you can see some of the teas were tea leaves and some of the teas were ground. Uh, and matcha that you hear all the time is actually ground tea leaves. So if you get a matcha tea, you're not just drinking tea water has passed through the leaves, but when you're drinking matcha tea, you're actually drinking the whole tea leaf that's been ground, turned into a powder, so you're drinking a bit more of the tea. So now taking a look at how the tea is actually made and manufactured. This is from a tea farm in Shizuoka Prefecture, Japan. And the most premium teas, the gyokuro teas and matcha teas are shaded teas, meaning that for the last 
three weeks or so of their life, they're actually grown under shade. You can see these shade things overhead, um, and that's what actually brings out a lot of the flavor of a matcha tea. It brings out the umami. We're going to talk about umami in just a little bit, uh, but the idea is to slowly decrease the amount of sunlight and photosynthesis, uh, which also gives gyokuro and matcha the uh, more caffeine when that happens. Now I'm talking about those these two things as they're the same thing. Sort of the basic Japanese tea is called sencha. That's grown mostly under sunlight. Gyokuro, the highest quality tea is shaded tea. And then matcha, they process it differently. But something that also makes Japanese tea unique, and you see it in this video, is the steaming process. After they harvest the tea, generally within the first day, they steam it to kind of lock in the flavors, and then they dry it out. And this is uh, in a factory in Shizuoka that produces the tea. In Japan, I love the kind of modern blend of high-tech plus also low-tech. When we were in Fukushima, we toured a number of sake factories. We didn't tour any uh, tea production facilities, but the sake factories also looked like this as well. So now when we talk about the matcha tea, uh, it's steamed for a little bit longer. It is then de-stemmed, so they take out the stems. It's just the top youngest parts of the tea, and then it's heated longer. It's heated in this furnace, and then after it's heated in the furnace, this is the part that really makes matcha tea after it's dried is where they grind it to make the matcha powder. And ground matcha, um, when they do it by hand, takes a really long time. And that's why matcha can be pretty expensive. Matcha tea is a small amount of the total tea that's produced in Japan. But good matcha tea has a smooth flavor and it's frothy and is made by whisking, putting some water into that powder. Uh, now, we have the matcha tea here. I do not have a bamboo whisk here at home, but I do have this that I'm gonna drink in a second. OC Girl is bringing the ramen back, so I'm gonna move this back here. And OC Girl, just go ahead and set that ramen right here on this table. Thank you very much. And now here we have the bowl of uh, instant noodle ramen that was out of those packages. This are probably better if I could angle the camera down a little bit. So we're going to give this a try. We're going to angle this down and we're going to move this so you don't see that. And then I'm going to put this bowl of ramen right here so you can see that just a little bit better. And I'll be eating those noodles in a second after I pick this up. And then we'll continue the conversation about tea after uh, I dive into those noodles because I'm sure you want to know how they taste. So this has a nice, mm, almost a nice peanutty sesame smell to it. It smells pretty good. And I, I said this earlier, but a lot of people, when they think of instant noodles, they think of low quality, cheap, salty Japanese instant noodles are really quite tasty and can actually get pretty close to the real thing. I mean, it's not the same as eating in a ramen shop, but when we're in Japan, we often eat uh, like instant noodle that we pick up from 7-Eleven and things like that. So let's, uh, I'll try not to put too much of this microphone. Hmm. This is the ASMR section of the video. Well, I guess you can hear me slurping a little bit. The noodles are a little bit wavy from the instant noodle production. They're chewy, springy, and we'll drink the broth. Mm, that broth actually has a really good flavor to it. Soy sauce base on the broth that we learned in the video that we saw at the Kitakata Ramen Festival. Kitakata Ramen, I find it's one of the ramens you can just eat the most because it's not greasy, it's not heavy, uh, and so I'm going to drink another one of these and then I'm gonna give this back to OC girl and say thank you very much OC girl so she can now have some for her early dinner as we go forward uh, honestly Bridget asks about what's my favorite instant ramen noodle you can get in the store I really like 
the um, Ipudo ramen. OC girl, can you hand me a, a Kleenex over there so I can wipe the ramen broth off my face? Thank you very much. Uh, OC girl, what's your favorite instant noodle you can buy in the store? She likes Taiwanese instant noodle because she's from Taiwan originally. What's it called? It's Wei Li dried, Wei Li dried noodle is her favorite. And she eats instant noodle probably weekly at least, if not more often. It's like Tanya's favorite food. And so I would encourage you, if you've never had Japanese instant noodle before, definitely to check it out. If you go to any Japanese supermarket, you'll find them. Don't think that they're uh, cheap. Brown Polly can't take it anymore, says, I'm going to find food. And Gumera says, thank God I'm eating while watching this. Thank God you are eating while watching this too. Uh, all right. So I wanted to go back to the teas now. Um, so... In the box, we've got this gyokuro tea, and this is a, a slightly different preparation of gyokuro tea in that this, oh, I need something to open this with. This is uh, powdered gyokuro tea, so that it's easy for me to make on the video here. I don't have to steep it and things like that. But because this tea is such a premium quality, uh, less than 1% of all the teas in Japan made are gyokuro teas. When you do steep this tea, you use very um, not warm water, like 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and because it's so flavorful, then you can actually use it multiple times to make the tea. It comes in a little package like this. This is Again, this is the powdered version, which they recommend for making iced tea, uh, and it's also nice that, you know, some of the things that you saw in there about how they have the farms they've put in here, this would probably make a great thing for a gift for some people. And and then they also say why we make gyokuro powder. Um, and so in this case, much like matcha, where they do the whole tea, this is the whole tea of gyokuro. So they say you get more vitamins. That's what it says right there. I didn't learn that at the festival. I learned that as I opened this package. And so what they did at the Japanese Food Fest and what they recommend in the brochure is taking this powder into a bottle of water. I'm going to bring this table over here. And uh, open the bottle of water. Open this powder and then to just put this into a bottle of water and then shake it up and then we will have some iced gyokuro tea that you could easily take this on the road. Now, what's... Oh, I got some powder on my fingers. What is... Also interesting about gyokuro tea is that the caffeine level is really high. So if you want to wake up, then this is absolutely the tea for you. I've heard people saying that there is more caffeine in a cup of gyokuro tea than there is in a cup of coffee. So if you're a coffee snob, well, you might actually want to be a tea snob as a way to wake you up. So let's go ahead and now pour this into here we get this nice dark green beverage and let's go ahead and drink this mm. it has a smooth flavor it's not sharp it's not bitter it's one of the things i think a lot of people don't like about japanese green teas for their first or second time or something they haven't had that much they think it's sharp and bitter but Try some gyokuro tea, and you will find it's actually quite smooth. And then you'll be <clears throat> awake, too. Okay, some of the other types of tea that you're going to hear about in Japan that we don't have in this box, because uh, we only had matcha and this, you're also going to hear about uh, hojicha tea. Hojicha tea is a roasted tea. And so uh, I mentioned they take the top portions of the tea for sencha, matcha, gyokuro. What do they do with the stems and the leaves on the bottom? Well, they use them to make hojicha or roasted tea. And if we look at uh, the video that we saw just a second ago...
we saw the hoji cha was actually that brown powder that's in there. That was a powdered form of it, but hoji cha, they roast it, and then the tea becomes brown. It's also really good for people who want to drink tea at night uh, because a lot of the caffeine is removed when it's roasted, and also the stems and leaves on the bottom have less caffeine than the leaves on top. Um, that's where most of the caffeine is. Uh, and if you're enjoying this video, talking about tea, talking about Japanese food, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. really helps me out, helps up helps out on the YouTube algorithm, uh, and we'll also be diving more into this uh, snack box in a bit to see what else is in here. Uh, and Brandon says he really likes my Pac-Man cup. Yeah, if you haven't seen this, this is indeed a Pac-Man cup, and I probably should have shown you as I was pouring it in here, but um, the, the Pac-Man and the ghosts got colored in as I poured the cold drink into it. Mm. And awesome Adam from 2099 says it's very good and healthy. It is very good and healthy and refreshing. I like this. I might have to find out how I get more of this afterwards. And actually, I probably can figure out how I get more of this afterwards on here. Uh, there's uh, yeah. If you wanted to, if you wanted to figure out how you get these things, they've got a website, uh, eco-farmer.jp. That's where you could get some more of. Some more of those teas if you want it. Check them out yourself. Zachary says, I'm teasing you all with these delicious sounding teas. Oh, that's a good pun. Teasing. Bada boom boom. Shh. Okay. So, anyway, now when you're at a tea shop or things like that and you see matcha, you'll know matcha is ground tea. You're drinking the whole tea leaf. Sencha is kind of the basic Japanese tea. Gyokuro, the highest quality tea with the most caffeine. And hoji cha is the roasted tea. There's a ton of other Japanese teas uh, that I could probably do a whole video in itself of all the different varieties that where they put add barley to it, they add rice to it, but those are the major types of teas. All right, let's go on to the third thing I learned at the Japanese Food Expo 2021, and that is about umami. I'm sure you've heard this word before, and it's something that they used a lot during the Japanese Food Expo as they were tasting the food, talking about the foods, saying that um, this, this has such an umami taste. So what is what is umami, anyway? Uh, and most of us are familiar with four tastes, uh, sweet sour, salty, and bitter. That's what we've been taught are the four tastes. But actually there are five tastes and the fifth taste is umami. It was a Japanese a scientist that discovered this taste in the early 1900s uh, as a primary ingredient from making soup from seaweed. Uh, and he asked his kids, he says, kids, this doesn't taste sweet, salty, sour, or bitter, what does it taste like? And at that point, they called it umami. It, it could almost literally translate to the essence of deliciousness. And in Western ingredients, we can think of umami as a savory taste, a taste that lingers for a while. If you eat uh, meats, broths, protein, that has a lot of that umami taste to it. Um, and in Japanese cooking, typical... Um, umami rich ingredients and why Japanese food tastes the way it does is soy sauce. In this box, there is some soy sauce. How do I know it's there? I told you I peeked into this to see what made sense to take out at certain times. Uh, this soy sauce has been aged for four years. And now maybe a lot of people in the U.S. or other places have just had Kikoman soy sauce or Lee Kum Kee soy sauce. I'm not picking on them. They are fine soy sauces, but Japanese aged soy sauces taste oh so different, oh so light, oh so refined. That's definitely one of the things that gives uh, Japanese food its flavor are the Japanese soy sauces. And I also mentioned earlier, um, oh, there's some, there's some tofu in this box. I have no section where I'm going to talk about tofu, so we'll just set that over here. Uh, but I mentioned seaweed, and there's a package of roasted seaweed in here. Um, yaki, nori, nori, seaweed, yaki, fried, roasted seaweed. 
our traveling princess, one of her favorite foods is roasted seaweed. OC Girl loves roasted seaweed. Um, we often get it in packages from Costco, uh, but I'll be looking forward to trying this little box roasted. If you've never had roasted seaweed, you can think of it as almost the Japanese version of like Doritos or things like that. Um, it's just eaten kind of as a snack. You take the roasted seaweed and, and, and eat it. But that's a lot of that pure umami there in the roasted seaweed here. I'm going to let you peek into the rest of this box as we go for it. Um, Aaron says, uh, that's a great soy sauce, and it's great over vanilla ice cream. Just a spoonful. We toured the pe factory this past weekend. That's very cool, Aaron. I will try this over ice cream. That's I've never had soy sauce over ice cream. We will give that a try. Um, now, we have had... One of the other things in here over ice cream, but we're going to get to that in a second. And Richard says, Topher tofu. That's a good word. Topher tofu. Maybe we should put one of the one of the pandas a little closer to this. Topher, why don't you why don't you come down and hang out there by the tofu? All right. Good, good, good. Uh, and Aaron says that those soy sauces were made in huge wooden barrels that can hold 6,000 liters of soy sauce. I believe it. Um, I'm going to show you some of those big barrels, not for making soy sauce, but for making miso in just a second. And Zachary asked if Bill Murray was at the festival promoting Suntory whiskey. He should have been. You know, for relaxing times, make it Suntory time. It's one of my favorite quotes uh, from the movie Lost in Translation. If you like anything about Japan and you've not seen the movie, um, you should definitely check it out. Uh, Hyunwoo asks, is spicy considered one of the tastes? Why or why not? It's not, and I don't know why, because I am not a scientist. Natalie says, Vegemite has an umami taste. Natalie, you must be from down under. And uh, Richard asks if umami is like unagi, uh, which is eel. Yeah, I guess eel could probably have a umami taste to it. Jake says that soy sauce over ice cream sounds awful. Well, Jake, tell you, I am going to put this soy sauce over ice cream, and I'll let you know how it tastes. I don't know. OC Girl, do we have any vanilla ice cream? We don't have any vanilla ice cream. Do we? Yes, we can't do it in this one. We'll do it in an upcoming, upcoming stream. And I will let you know whether it is good or awful or not. All right. Now, in addition to soy sauce, I mentioned miso is a uh, popular umami-type ingredient. We'll talk more about a miso in a second. Shiitake mushrooms, and in Western culture, uh, cheeses, particularly Parmesan, has a lot of umami, and ketchup has also been found to have <laughs> a lot of umami. And in the comments, there's definitely it's definitely mixed over soy sauce versus ice cream. Brandon says that's not a great combo. All right, well, I will I will be the judge and the jury for this one at least. Okay, let's go on to the fourth thing that I learned at the Japanese Food Expo 2021. And the fourth thing that I learned is about uh, yuzu. So we talked about teas, and there's this Japanese citrus fruit called yuzu, and they put yuzu in a lot of things, uh, but I want to share with you what the uh, lady who was working the Shizuoka booth had to say about yuzu and tea. So yuzu is a type of citrus uh, we have in Japan, and actually winter is the season of yuzu, so we oh. have a lot of yuzu, and we make a lot of uh, Japanese food yeah. using yuzu, especially the peel. So yuzu is a taste that you'll taste a lot in Japan. It's a scent that you'll smell a lot. They use it in a lot of like humidifiers. They use it in a lot of hotels. And so now if you're wondering, what is a yuzu anyway? Uh, here's a picture of various citrus fruits. The yuzu is the yellow one in the middle. On the left, we have a grapefruit. Next to that, we have an orange. Then we have a yuzu. Then we have a lemon. And then we have a lime. Yuzu is a tart uh, and oh, that was not the not the button I was looking for. Yuzu is tart and fragrant, uh, and kind of taste-wise, it's maybe between a grapefruit and a mandarin orange. Uh, and they use it in Japanese cooking much the way 
uh, in Western cooking, we would use uh, like lemons, where they mostly use the juice and the peel. Uh, and so that was something that they actually put in the tea. Um, Hyun Woo says yuzu is the best citrus. I agree. I really like yuzu. It's something I only discovered when I went to Japan. You you find them rarely in the states. And actually, I found out that the the um, Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. has banned the import of yuzu from anywhere you can't like import like the fresh yuzu fruit so you don't find it uh as much here but definitely check out things uh that are yuzu tasting or flavored uh they will also put yuzu into alcoholic drinks you'll find a lot of cocktails that are yuzu flavored popular sweets like cake and yes they they actually even use yuzu to flavor doritos there's a doritos uh yuzu flavored flavor. Michael asks, what are uh, our travel goals for this year? Uh, the next trip, first trip we have booked is to go to Hawaii in this summer. Uh, we also want to go to Taiwan. We'd love to go back to Japan if they reopen again. It's really hard to make any concrete goals this year um, because... Who knows when places open and who knows when places are cold. So we're just we're taking it one step at a time. Hawaii is the, is the next thing. Brandon... Uh, says it makes me want to garnish a drink with some yuzu and uh lean into the english life uh wants wants oc girl to say hi on the chat uh so oc oc girl's been requested so she's she's gonna say hi to y'all in the chat um okay the fifth thing that uh i learned from the japanese food expo 2021 is about miso uh so there are a few different types of miso. Miso, it's a traditional Japanese ingredient, unlike soy sauce, that's soy beans in a sauce. Miso is fermented soybeans that have been turned into a paste. And there's a few different types. Uh, typically, if you have like miso soup, which we've got right here, this is probably the most common miso thing that people have their first time in Japan or eating in a Japanese restaurant, they get miso soup. And miso soup, like if you look at the first ingredient on it, it will say the ingredient is um, soybean paste. And then it says the particular soybean paste that they use has soybean, rice, and salt. So rice miso is one of the types of miso paste. Uh, the second type of miso paste that's popular is barley miso, where in addition to the fermented soybeans, the salt, and the water, they also add barley to it. Um, it's uh, a, a darker color because of the barley. Uh, the third type of miso is red miso, and red miso is made only using soybeans and nothing else, and so that's what gives it that dark red flavor. Uh, red miso is particular particularly popular in Aichi, which is the prefecture in the center of Japan. It's where Nagoya is, home to Toyota. Um, and then there's a, another type of miso there. Let's see. Okay, there's, there's more miso soup that I've got in the snack box. There's more miso there. Um, there's a company that produces hacho miso, and they put them in these little packages because... Uh, it takes so long to make them. Uh, hacho miso, they ferment the soybeans for two years before selling them. Uh, I want to show you a little video uh, that talks about this hacho miso. And then I'm going to show you the ice cream that I ate last year at the Japanese Food Expo with the miso on the ice cream, something that you wouldn't think is a good combination, but actually is pretty good. First, let's look at, at how they make it. And just so that you're going to think about seeing this, um, we heard earlier about these large 6,000-liter caskets, yet they use these caskets to ferment these soybeans in that are entirely made of wood. They use them for like over 100 years to make these things. Um, and by the way, this promo video, the, the announcer has like the best voice ever. I, I hope to develop my voice into a, into a voice like this. Aichi Prefecture, in the heart of Japan, offers Japan's most unique food culture. Miso is the sole food of Aichi. Aichi's traditional miso is made from soybeans, natural salt and water, and matured in huge wooden tubs sealed with three tons of hand-laid stones. Uh, 
And so then here, they're showing some of the different dishes that can be made using the hacho miso. Instead of selling it as a, a paste when they export it like this, they export it as a powder, so it doesn't have to be refrigerated, um, which makes it easy to, uh, you know, carry around with you or just uh, keep on a shelf. Uh, but, you know, they're like, hey, it's good on tacos, it's good on pasta, but in particular on ice cream. One of the most interesting ice creams here, though, is this ice cream. Soft serve ice cream with hacho miso on it. It's kind of a sweet and savory combination. Mm. And I know that because this is about the fourth one of these that I've had. Uh, but Kate, what makes this miso so special? It's uh, long aged and fermented. So uh, not only uh, uh, delicious, but also uh, very good for your health. Yeah. And prevent, uh, prevent uh, cancer. So it's good. Uh, that's good. So that's right. Age, age for like two years, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a long time. So uh, you can put uh, not only ice cream, but uh, curry rice or uh, uh, chicken and beef. It's very good. Yeah, and so one of the, the ways that in Japan they talk about like how good something is or how special it is, is is by how small of the market they use. You know, in, in the U.S. we like to talk about something like, oh, Doritos has like 50% of the chip market for snacks. But in Japan, they'll say hacho miso is only 0.2% of the miso that's produced. So um, by far, it's the smallest amount because it takes uh, the longest. And by the way, wasn't, wasn't that guy's voice just amazing? Now, if you do go to Japan and you go to Nagoya, they eat miso on like everything. Uh, but in particular, uh, they eat the red miso on everything. They, re they eat this red miso from Aichi Prefecture. Uh, and so they'll have like a katsu don, which is a uh, fried breaded pork cutlet on a rice bowl. And then it's the red miso. If you get like, um, you know, the miso soup or miso ramen, it'll typically be that red miso in Nagoya. So that's a specialty to check out if you visit there. Uh, all right. And uh, let's go on to... Number six, the sixth thing that I learned at the Japanese Food Expo. Somebody mentioned this earlier about eating raw egg, but this is, uh, I learned what the phrase oyakodon means. And it's a dish that I've ordered in Japan a number of times, and I just I just never knew what it meant. I just, I just always ordered it. At the Japanese Food Expo, they had some cooking demonstrations, uh, and so I want to show you what they said about what oyakodon means. It's kind of an, an interesting term for a food item. And I have uh, mother side in the chicken. Yes. So for those of you that, um, oyako means mother and daughter, mm -hmm. he was saying. And so, of course, you have here the mother, which is chicken, and then the baby, which is the egg. And yeah. that's why it's called oyako ramen. Hi. Oyako doi are very popular. Yeah. But we do this one with oyako ramen. Yes. And ikitakata ramen, the Fukushima style. So the literal translation there is like the parent and child rice bowl, oyakodon, and then the parent and child is chicken and the egg. Sort of, it makes me feel sort of sad now that I'm going to eat that, that it's the, you know, I'm, I'm eating the parent's child. I wonder, I wonder if you can order the special one that's like the egg from the chicken that you ate there. Anyway, if you see oyakodon, now you'll know that that means the parent and child rice bowl. Um... And uh, Zachary Smith says, hey, if you're liking this video, please hit the thumbs up once. And if you don't like it, yeah, hit the thumbs down twice to really let me know you don't like it. Thank you, Zachary, for that one. Okay, now, uh, before we go to Q&A, I want to show you some of the other things that were in the uh, gift box that they sent. I should go ahead and, like, put this whole thing on camera now. I probably don't need the bottle of tea that I got there. Um, here, I can, I can probably untie this completely now? No, I'll never be able to tie that back again. So I'm going to leave that tied for the moment. There are some chopsticks in here, and what's special about these chopsticks is they've got um, ridges on them. How many of you have ever had a hard time eating noodles with chopsticks? Uh, these chopsticks have special ridges for eating noodles. So, you know, you don't always get this in every restaurant, but if, you know, you're going someplace and you don't want to be that person that comes with a fork, then uh, you can bring your chop. These are called tornado chopsticks is what they call these chopsticks. That's kind of cool. Uh, and we've got 
Some more snack items in here. We've got crunchy milk candy. Let's go ahead and open up. Hey, I should open this up with this facing forward to you. Let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, the crunchy milk candy. And then there's little, there's a whole bunch of like little packages in here of the pico candy. And it's a little white thing that looks like this. And, mmm. It felt like, oh, can you hear me chewing it? It's got a hard outside and a soft inside. And it tastes like like cereal milk. Like after you've had milk in like Captain Crunch or Fruit Loops for a long time. That's what it tastes like. And there's a second one here too. Um, and then we've got this from Bentenya. There are these bands that they use to advertise things in Japan. And this is, uh, what's this? It says in here what this is. This is a hand towel in Japan in public restrooms. They generally do not have paper towels or towels because they expect you to bring your own towel with you. Japanese children from an early age are basically taught not to go anywhere without a towel. So now I've got a neat, here, let's open this up. Now this is a neat hand towel to take with me that probably looks a little cooler than the uh, <coughs> the hotel towels that I might take. Uh, it's kind of cool. It almost looks like one of those like art pieces you could hang up on the wall. I almost, almost hate to use it as a towel. It's so uh, pretty. And we're down to the final couple things in here we got you know people said there's everything in here there's uh some microwavable rice in here by the way if you're ever a pinch for rice this is sold in tons of japanese convenience stores if you want some rice to go with things you'll just get the fresh cooked rice like this toss in the microwave and then you've got rice that's the problem with rice it always takes too long to eat uh oh and I was talking about the yuzu tea. I was looking for this earlier and didn't find it because it was at the bottom. Uh, but here they actually have the yuzu hoji cha roasted green tea tea bags. All right. That is what's in the box. And that is what I learned at the Japanese Food Expo 2021. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, now that I'm surrounded by all the things I took out of that gift box, what questions do you have? Why? What happened to my question mark? It says my image, 180 by 80. Okay, well, I guess I guess we're not going to have the I guess we're not going to have the rotating question mark for this one. I'll have to figure out where my question mark went and bring it back because it's it's so much cooler when the questions rotate. Hyunwoo says candies in Asia are so much better. There is a big variety of candies in Asia and they're not as probably sweet as American candies. American candies are probably just like sugar, sugar, sugar. Um, Briggs says noodles or nachos, tough choice. Oh, OC girl would definitely pick noodles. I think I would pick nachos. I grew up in San Diego and so I like nachos. Uh, lean into the English way of life asked how much did it cost to attend this expo uh, this year because it was a virtual expo it was a live stream and then they sent this to 50 lucky winners uh, so actually if you want to watch the original live stream I put a link in the description uh, that you could check it out I don't I I don't remember the price uh, last year um, I will say uh, the in-person one that I, I sure hope comes in person next year it isn't cheap because the admission includes all the tastings uh, and we had like more sushi than we could fill in our bellies. It was totally worth the price of admission. Uh, and when one does come back for next year, I'll let you all know in case you're in the LA area, you could visit and, and you could say hi because uh, we'll, we'll probably be there next year. As assuming we, we can do that again, right? Uh, Jeremy asks, if I like martial arts, have you been to a martial arts gym in Japan? I have never been to a martial arts gym. I like the concept of martial arts, but I've, I've never done martial arts. Uh, Liz A wanted to voice it, and she's going to vote not for nachos, but she's going to vote for noodles. Thank you for that. Uh, Richard asked if in the box there were any chocolate chalk sticks. I guess these were... 
These were these are chocolate in color, but not chocolate in taste. I like Pocky is almost like a chocolate chopstick. Um, and uh, Kathy asks, what came first, the chicken or the egg? That That is the ultimate question. Um, Larry asks if I like the sushi in Japan. I love the sushi in Japan. Actually, before I started traveling to Japan, I did not like sushi because all the sushi I ever had was cheap sushi that wasn't very good. Uh, you know, supermarket sushi that's been sitting in the refrigerated case for all day. Just it, it just isn't good. The fish isn't good. The rice isn't good. Uh, we then visited um, a fish market in Japan where we had a, a chirashi bowl, a bowl of just like fresh tuna, salmon, like, you know, it was right off the boat this morning. And I was like, ah, this raw fish stuff is actually pretty good. OC Girl used to make fun of me in the first few sushi restaurants we went to before we went there, before I fell in love with it. We went to this fancy sushi restaurant in Otaru, Japan, which is uh, outside of Sapporo in Hokkaido in the north. And I, I wanted to order the uh, the fried chicken. And OC Girl's like, you can't. We're at a sushi restaurant. You can't order the fried chicken. I'm like, I want, I want the fried chicken. I, I should order the fried chicken. Luckily, she, she got the best of me and you know got me to not order the fried chicken, which was a good choice in the end. Though I do like Japanese fried chicken. It is uh, pretty good. Hyun Woo says, if there's one Japanese food item that you can get to eat for the rest of your life, which one would you pick? Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's a food item or if it's a, like a restaurant in particular. I I really like Pepper Lunch. Um, Pepper Lunch does this uh, like sizzling plate, rice with beef, with soy sauce and like a garlic sauce on it. Um, Pepper Lunch is probably my singular favorite thing to eat in Japan. Uh, you know, price, value, all those things combined. If if I like, if it wasn't price, then I would definitely pick like the Japanese, you know, A5 Wagyu beef. They're like super marbly, super amazing beef. American beef is supposed to be like renowned as being amazing, and so was Australian beef. But oh, Japanese high quality beef, it just it melts in your mouth, and it's amazing. And I didn't I didn't believe it until I I really had it. And, you know, in Osaka and Kyoto, we went to some, like, Kobe beef restaurants. But those those aren't even the same thing. I mean, you go to these places where you get, like, five bites of beef, and it's out, it's out of this world. Uh, Booba asks, uh, upon my travels through Tokyo, have you gotten to experience karaoke there? I have experienced karaoke in a number of places, uh, including in Japanese karaoke parlors. Um, you know, the big difference between Western karaoke and Japanese karaoke, or, or maybe Western and, and Asian karaoke, right? Western karaoke, American karaoke is, um, a bar or some place with a stage where one person sings karaoke to, like, the whole place in Japan, you rent little karaoke rooms for you and your four, five, ten closest friends to be in that room. You can get drinks, you can get food. Um, I'm not, I'm not much of a singer, so you know, if I do karaoke, uh, I want to karaoke to like Weird Al Yankovic or or Snoop Dogg, because then you can't blame me for being out of tune. Um, Brandon says I'm not much of a tea person. What kind of Japanese style should you recommend to me? I, I recommend. I recommend what I was drinking here, which is the gyokuro tea. It's pretty tasty. I don't know where the box went. Um, the other thing I would recommend for you, because it's like less less tea-ish, is uh, matcha latte. Um, if you get the matcha powder that's in milk, then it actually like you're drinking tea, but you would you would never know you're drinking tea if you're having a matcha latte. And I I think that some people have a hard time getting over the green color because I don't know there's there's like some association to green color being like kale or spinach which are things that I don't love all that much and you might look at that and be like oh Chris is drinking a kale thing and it's like it's like it's not it's a it's a whole taste of its own uh, MT asks which sake do I recommend I I don't know that we have a favorite sake OC girl, do you have a favorite sake? No, but I like those Nigori ones. Nigori, yeah. 
the cloudy sake, right? Yeah, we we like the cloudy sakes and the um, like the fruity sakes. You know, things that kind of have a light taste and aren't too um, sharp or too alcoholic. Now, the other thing about drinking sake is the vessel that you drink it out of matters a lot. Whether it's a glass or an open porcelain container. I really like to drink my sake out of kind of, they almost look more like plates uh, because it kind of lets the sake breathe a little bit more. Um, Kathy, uh, Kathy's recommendation is chai latte. You know, the thing about chai latte, like in Indian tea from India, um, is I never had a good chai latte until we went to London. Uh, we were in London uh, at an Indian restaurant there um, and we had the chai latte, and I was like, this is really good, because every time I've had it at, like, Starbucks or things like that, I'm like, meh, I could pass on it. <laughs> Saul uh, says that my drink is, is wheatgrass. I assure you it has no taste of grass at all. Um, and Larry asks if I've tried the green Kit Kats in Japan. I have tried the green Kit Kats in Japan. I think I like the regular, I think I like the regular chocolatey Kit Kats. The best, I don't know. It's just kind of a perfect uh, taste to go with it. Um, Liz asks if I've had uh, Kalpis. I love it. I have had Kalpis, and uh, this is an interesting one of these um, renaming things. In the U.S., if you buy it, it's called Calpico because they decided uh, that if it was called Kalpis that people would think of something else. So uh, that's how it's named in Japan. It's called Calpico in the U.S., it's kind of like a Japanese particular soda. Uh, I like the teas more than I like Kalpas, but Kalpas is uh, good too. Uh, Esther wants to know if this is a custom white red keyboard behind me. This keyboard um, is from a company in Taiwan, and I got this keyboard because I just have a small space back here for that particular computer, and so I wanted something that I could slide right underneath it, so it's missing um, the number pad, and it's missing the keys up on top. It also has a whole bunch of different colors and things like that. Uh, the The brand of this keyboard is called Ducky, and it can do a lot of different um, colors and lighting effects. The colors right now are purple. That's where you get to see that. I had it on blue, but then our, our traveling princess came out here and was just like banging on the keyboard, and she figured out all the secret keystrokes to change the lights from blue to purple, and so I decided that uh, <laughs> that that was just the color that it was destined to be. Uh, Richard asked about the fish market that we went to if it was underwater so the fish can breathe. You know, there were probably some stands that actually had live fish. Yeah, but most of them most of them were just on ice at that point. Uh, Natalie asked if I eat sushi in the U.S. now. Yes, I eat sushi in the U.S. We eat sushi in the U.S. Um, but I would say, you know, there's a difference between like American sushi, like Philadelphia rolls that have cream cheese or things like that are not are definitely not sushi. Uh, but we like we like traditional sushi, sort of like omakase style. You know, the, the place where you go to and um, you just sit down at the bar and they they give you what's great today. That's that's some of our favorite things. We also uh, like uni, which is sea urchin in. Uh, Garden Grove, California, which is near LAX Airport, there's a place called Maruhide Uni Club. They are the number one supplier of sea urchin here in Southern California. They supply the sea urchin to Japan Airlines that they serve on board Japan Airlines. And uh, they have a really good sea urchin bowl. Uh, and actually, the sea urchin off the coast of California, particularly from Santa Barbara, is kind of world-renowned as some of the sweetest sea urchin anywhere. There you go. Um, does Topher have a Japanese name? Ah, we've not given Topher a Japanese name. We probably should, um, but uh, he doesn't have one yet. Uh, Esther wants to know about what switches I have on this keyboard. I believe they're they're blues. They're the they're really short travel, so they don't have to go down all that far. Um, that's what it is. Uh, Natalie says uh, she had some great sushi in Laguna Beach. I'm curious, what was the sushi place you went to in Laguna Beach? Because we're there pretty often, so we might check that out. Sean wants to know, what's the best onsen we've been to? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this in two ways. The hotel we've stayed at that almost had like amazing service uh, was this hotel called Aino Kaze. 
A-E-N-O-K-A-Z-E. You can search my video on it. Uh, just like the service there was amazing. Like the staff like hides behind corners to like jump out and help you with things uh, over the top. On our last visit to Kyushu, we stayed at some really good onsens and onsen towns. Uh, if you search for like um, Kyushu Yellow Productions vlog, um, you can find three that we stayed at in there. Those, those are great ones that we would we would love to go back to again. We try to go to an onsen at least once or twice on every trip, um, but we. Uh, so it's 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 hard to just pick one. Melanie says, "Hey Chris, if I say please, can I have a T-shirt for free?" Well, you know what time it is. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. Melanie, it's time for the giveaway. If you answer this question correctly, you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt shipped to you anywhere in the world. And this soy sauce that I showed earlier from Japan, my question is, how long was this soy sauce aged? If you give the correct answer of how long this soy sauce was aged, then I will send you a Yellow Productions Crew shirt. If you don't get to win one, you can pick one up from the Yellow Productions Etsy shop. You will find a link in the description to that. Uh, last question from S while we're waiting for those answers to come in says i can't seem to eat sushi in new york city after eating it in japan do you sense the difference as well esther for sure uh, and that's why we're actually pretty picky on the sushi that we eat and sometimes my friends will be like hey chris uh do you want to go get sushi and they'll name a place and i'll be like no because the sushi at that place is really bad i, I only want to go get sushi at a place that's actually really good and and they're they aren't that many right you have to be picky and we've even went to some really like high-end sushi places in los angeles like you know they cost they cost some serious bucks to eat there and we're like this this just wasn't that good our you know one of our favorite places to eat sushi is in uh orange california it's a sushi restaurant that's there and this place is like so japanesely authentic japanesely authentic can i say that as a word that they uh, they take reservations, but they only answer their phone for 15 minutes a day. So if you want to make a reservation, you have to call them between 5 and 5.15. That's it. That's the only time they answer their phone. You have to call them between 5 and 5.15. They have one phone line. They answer the phone for those 15 minutes, and then after that, they open the restaurant. Uh, but if you make a restaurant, it's great. It's like $80 for the omokase, super high-end seafood, uh, and we love it. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. And it didn't just so happen that Esther's comment was up on the screen that I then flipped over to her next one. She was the first person to give this answer, which that this soy sauce has been aged for four years. Esther, congratulations. Uh, you can send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. You'll find a link in the description to that or message me on Facebook. You'll also find a link to my Facebook page in the description. Let me know what size shirt you want and where you want me to send it to, and I will get it out right out to y'all. Well... As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video, but it's been super great to hang out with y'all today. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the Japanese Food Expo. I hope you enjoyed seeing what 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 was in the gift box. Uh, and if you want to see the whole uh, two-hour Japanese Food Expo, you'll find the link to the original one in the description. Uh, and I hope to see you in person there for the next one once we can all do that again.